What could be more appropriate? So first of all, we've been sitting a long time. We've got to get the oxygen running again, moving. Why doesn't everyone stand up, move around a little bit, say hello to your neighbor, just like we do in Temple. <laughs> Introduce yourself. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> I'm Jewish, by the way. <laughs> Feel better? <laughs> Just 25 more minutes before I stand in your, I don't stand in your way anymore. <laughs> Maybe 20. So, thank you all for coming, of course. Thanks for investing with us. But before I begin today's presentation, it's going to require your full attention. Unless you're a first responder, please turn off your phones. And don't just set it to vibrate, power it down. If it's not fully powered down, we're going to know. <laughs> and you will be ineligible for complimentary ice cream cones following <laughs> today's surprise musical performance. And we take our ice cream code of conduct seriously. The theme of the 2023 Barron Conference is Own It. So because we're glued to devices 24-7, markets respond materially to alerts and news cycles as traders seeking instant gratification miss long-term opportunities. It's impossible to grasp the ramifications of profound change. For example, I'm a little dry. For example, in 1876, visionary inventor Alexander Graham Bell, he's the guy who invented the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell believed that one day every major city in America will have a telephone. One telephone. <laughs> the visionary guy. If that were the case, this is what it would look like on Thursday afternoons <laughs> in New York City when people lined up to call the one phone in Cleveland. <laughs> Barron Capital is a unique, one-of-a-kind investment firm that identifies transformational change and opportunity, studies businesses, and continuously interviews executives to evaluate character, abilities, and vision, which allow us to own investments. We own investments, we own businesses, not stocks. Today, I want to discuss four topics. What I mean by own it, Barron Research, how we hone it, what it takes to be a cornerstone investment. Do you see a pattern there? <laughs> own, hone, cornerstone. Barron Capital Mission. So our own it process and exceptional people have produced extraordinary returns. Own it. So just like Rome wasn't built in a day, neither was Barron Capital. That was much faster than a day. <laughs> so speaking of the Roman Empire. So, so um, there is this trending topic on TikTok <laughs> where women are asking the men in their lives one simple but rather bizarre question. Watch. Babe, how often do you think about the Roman Empire? Three times a day. How often do you think about the Roman Empire? Hey, at least three or four times a week. What do men think about? You know, you look at them and they have this like empty look on their face all the time. Yeah. Say, what's going on in your mind? And they go, nothing. Well, now we know. It's the Roman Empire. <laughs> See, nobody knows what's going on in my mind. <laughs> Except my wife. So basically, last week or a couple of days ago, I uh, woke up, getting ready to go to work, and she says to me, you know, you had a big conversation with me last night. I said, no, I don't remember that. And she said, well, you got up in the middle of the night and he started talking to me. I, what, what was I talking about? Return on investment, capital allocation, <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> That's what I talk about. 
So I think about the Roman Empire all the time, especially what a cool idea it would be to have a scream ice cream truck in front of the Colosseum. I used to, I used to drive an ice cream truck. It was a tough job. <laughs> Barron Capital invests in awesome growth businesses that are increasing in value rapidly and focuses on not selling. That's the key, not selling. Our own it process has been built not in a day, but over my entire career. Sam Walton regarded not selling as his secret sauce. He believed you shouldn't sell shares of a great business like Walmart for 100 years. Bernard Arnault, the LVMH luxury brand founder and CEO, agrees. Arnault's five children each own one-fifth of their family stake in LVMH. The unanimous approval of the LVMH board is necessary for any of them to sell shares for 30 years. Elon Musk also believes you should invest in great businesses as if time is infinite, infinite. And I thought I was long-term. <laughs> so like Walton, Arnaud, and Elon, and dozens of other entrepreneurs in whom we've invested, we think in terms of decades. And the compounding investments in exceptional people and businesses, owning, not buying and selling, is how wealth is created. Every time you buy and sell, you're paying taxes. You don't end up with what you really had before. It takes you a long time, once you sell, to get something else to make as much money as you would have had before you sold. An important ingredient of Barron's own and secret sauce is our AI, Barron Analyst Actual Intelligence. <laughs> well, you saw it. You listened to these people. Uh, actual intelligence, not artificial intelligence. That's what enables us to not sell awesome businesses, awesome. Algorithms cannot imagine the future and cannot evaluate character, talent, and vision, which is why we only hire humans. <laughs> Although we're still not sure about Alex Shemansky. <laughs> His office is next to mine, just in case. <laughs> so you can't have conviction and it is scary being next to him. <laughs> you can't have conviction to not sell by relying on others. Certainty only comes from your own research. Not selling great investments may sound easy. All you have to do is nothing. But it's the hardest thing. What you doing today? Not selling. But you did that yesterday. I wasn't finished. <laughs> Our analysts imagine what a business may become by understanding why it's distinctive. It was difficult to envision a Starlink satellite broadband internet. Musk conceived the missions to Mars enabled by re reusable rockets, which will make it possible for Starlink to earn hundreds of billions of dollars per year in the 2030s. Hundreds of billions of dollars per year in the 2030s. This company is valued right now for $150 billion in a private company. We own it. And then in addition to that, uh, that's about a little over 1% of that company, one and a quarter percent, and we keep adding to our position. Elon recently emailed me, so $150 billion is going to make hundreds of billions a year. Elon recently, and that's in, in, in 15 years, 20 years. I'm 80. There's not many people who are 80 who are thinking about 15, 20 years uh, investments, but I am. Elon recently emailed me, and you're going to benefit from that. Elon recently emailed me, SpaceX is building internet version two in space. You understand, few others do. Elon also cracked the code of building profitable EVs and is working hard to make them self-driving, which could add hundreds of billions per year to, add, to test those profits, hundreds of billions a year from autonomous driving. That alone is probably worth a trillion dollars. The whole company today is valued for 600 billion. The lesson, when you identify a once in a 500 year talent, 500 years talent, like Leonardo da Vinci or Elon Musk, when you see what others don't see, lean in. Not taking risk is the greatest risk, one of my friends says. 
Just like businesses in which we invest are distinctive, so are we. Four Seasons' Izzy Sharp believes that to be successful, you must be a contrarian and have unbelievable will to endure criticism. You need to be different, accept criticism, and if you're wrong, accept that you're wrong and own it. OK, second topic, hone it. Most artists associate craft with artists or makers. The craft we hone is research. We want to know more about executives and their businesses than anyone else. That's part of our own it secret sauce. Not to be confused with Linda's secret sauce. <laughs> it's on her desk. That's on her desk. <laughs> I call her trash mouth, <laughs> which is really freaking, you know, whatever, <laughs> spicy. <laughs> Our theme in 2015 was question everything. We really do question everything. Strategies, opportunities, and risks, like everyone else. But we also ask about leaders' backgrounds, what they do when they're kids, personal interests, families, topics that most deem unimportant, but to us reveal character. Standards of performance come from the top. That's why we want to really know CEOs. Time and again, when company executives visit us and are told they're going to be late for their next meeting, they respond, I don't want to leave. This is too much fun. Please tell my next meeting I'll be late. So what are we looking for? Belief before ability. Sam Altman, OpenAI's founder, thinks self-belief is immensely powerful. And the most wildly successful people believe in themselves almost to the point of delusion. You guys can see it yourselves. When you see someone who's incredibly successful, they believe so much in themselves, that's what makes it happen. Elon's beliefs and optimism are unshakable. Look, I know I sometimes say or post strange things, but that's just how my brain works. I just want to say, I reinvented electric cars and I'm sending people to Mars in our rocket ship. Did, did, did you think I was also going to be a chill, normal dude? <laughs> Hey, can you play that again? <laughs> I love the eyes. <laughs> Guess not. <laughs> but I want you to see, look in his belt. Look at that. He reinvented the button. Look at that, <laughs> on his coat. That's his button. <laughs> Nobody laughed? I thought that was funny. <laughs> Obsession. By the way, he was out with his Saturday Night Live, Night Live Sat SNL skit. I helped him with that. <laughs> Obsession. Barron Research identifies executives obsessed with their businesses and missions and growth. Arch Capital's Mark Radisson is obsessed with profitable underwriting, not just premium growth. Choice Hotels' Pat Patius is obsessed with providing opportunities to as many immigrant hotel franchisees. Those are his customers, the immigrant franchisees who own these hotels. Co-stars Andy Florence, you heard about him today. Uh, he's obsessed with real estate data, analytics, and marketplace. Elon is obsessed with mission, electric cars, space engineering, first principles, and dancing. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> ad -lib. that was ad -lib. <laughs> Big Trina Spear is obsessed with serving her community of underappreciated healthcare workers. Fact sets Phil Snow is obsessed with being the most convenient open source of data to enable his clients to learn as much as possible about their investments. Kinsale's Michael Kehoe is obsessed with quoting all insurance submissions within 24 hours of receipt with strict terms and conditions based on data and analytics. Because he gives the brokers commission, uh, you know, quotes in 24 hours, and sometimes other people take weeks to give them quotes, he gets more business and he can charge a premium for that. Pays the people less than they would have otherwise. Barron is obsessed. That's because he has a special business. That's why we have been investing for him for maybe six years, and we've compounded over 50% a year. 50% a year for an insurance company. Barron is obsessed with talented people, distinctive growth businesses, and owning it. And I doubt you'll find anyone 
more optimistic and more excited to wake up <clears throat> every morning to see what will happen that day than I am. This picture illustrates my optimism. <laughs> That's me challenging Claudia Pagazzani, the head of our research department, to a jumping contest this year. I lost. I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not I was right. You can see I didn't even get off the ground. Look at her. <laughs> the most amazing thing also is that her daughter worked as a summer intern at a firm in Connecticut where my nephew worked. They sent us after they saw this picture, the same picture, but Andrew was actually flying <laughs> and was sort of tied with her daughter. Quality. Bernard Arnault says LVMH's main goal is not profits, it's desirability. Arnault focuses on craftsmanship and style. He believes profits will follow. If you do a great job, the profits will come along. We believe businesses that sacrifice margin to improve quality create sustainable advantage. Exceptional takes time was our theme in 2016. That's true for individuals and for companies. Masterpieces are not created on the first try. The Louvre says it took Da Vinci 16 years to create the Mona Lisa. Do you think he was working from home? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crazy about working from home. <laughs> it's hard to work from home. One person. <laughs> One person thought that. <laughs> cornerstone it. A building's cornerstone embodies unique architectural values of its designer, not unlike an artist's signature on a painting or sculpture. When Picasso, Warhol, de Kooning, Calder, Matisse, or Rodin signed a picture or sculpture, it reflected their unique visions and exacting standards. We believe if you're doing the same thing as everyone else, you will not be hard to compete against. Barron has maniacal focus on differentiation. Differentiated businesses that meet our exacting standards are the cornerstones of Barron portfolios. Tesla and SpaceX are two unique Barron cornerstone investments. The two of them together represent about 14% of our firm's AUM. 10% for Tesla, 4% for SpaceX. The other 86%, and by the way, I think we're going to make a ton in both of them over the next 10 years, 15 years, a ton. I think in Tesla, we're probably going to make six, seven, eight times over the next 10 years. And in SpaceX, I think over the next three or four years, we'll probably make a double, um, $250, $300 billion. And I think we'll double again by, uh, by 2030. And then in the 2030s, we can make 10 times. So basically, I'm thinking that in SpaceX, we can make 30 to 50 times our money over the next 15 or 20 years. 30 to 50 times, that's potential for SpaceX. Other 86% is also invested in exceptional differentiated growth businesses. And that's unique to us. There's very few people that have this SpaceX investment because it's a private company still. But we have it in a couple of our funds in Barron Partners, Barron Focus Growth, and a couple of other little sprinklings. And then uh, we have a partnership that has an investment in it also. But I am so excited about that investment. Uh, we expect Tesla and SpaceX, the low cost providers of technologies that are revolutionizing enormous space and transportation industries will continue to be among the fastest growing businesses we own. They're large companies, and we still think they're going to be among the fastest growing companies we own. Gasoline OEMs had been innovators 100 years ago. That's Henry Ford's company, um, you know, around the turn of the century, around the turn of the 19th century, 20th century, rather. But in the 1950s, they stopped being innovators and focused instead on making as much money as they could, as much money as they thought they could, and they outsourced their supply chain, which is now to their detriment. Studebaker, Nash, Edsel, DeSoto, Packard, Kaiser, Frisker, Pontiac, Plymouth, uh, Stutz. Small percentage of companies are def uh, defunct, defunct, and uh, or lines are defunct, and hundreds of them. This is not all, just hundreds of them. Ford, by the way, in recent disclosure, talked about in electric cars, 
The dealers don't want to sell them because dealers make money on servicing cars. There's no servicing that takes place in electric cars. But uh, in a recent disclosure by Ford, they said that every car they make, they lose $36,000. They lose $36,000 every time they make and sell an electric car. They make profits on the gasoline cars, but what's going to happen when they don't sell any more gasoline cars? And the dealers don't want to sell electric cars, but sooner or later they're going to have to. Tesla, on the other hand, well, the other car companies are outsourced uh, for all the parts and all the things that you really make money on. Tesla is vertically integrated. They all work together, all in one place. Engineers design everything, factories, compute, software, parts, all together. Tesla proprietary data, they're going to have more compute, by the way, than anyone in the world in 18 months. And to test their proprietary data from 100 million miles driven daily and exponentially growing compute to train AI has created autonomous driving advantage that we believe is insurmountable. Most people talk about self-driving going to be 10, 15 years away. I think it's virtually here. You're going to see amazing things happening soon. So far, only Tesla and China's BYD have been able to profitably manufacture electric cars at scale. We think, ultimately, most electric cars will be assembled by others. You don't make much money when you're an assembler. Assembled by others and use Tesla inside technology, including full self-driving. That's like Intel being inside of Microsoft computers. Remember seeing Intel inside? That's what Tesla's going to be in all cars, in my opinion, our opinion. By the way, don't miss for the first time in New York, first time in New York, the Cybertruck is on the plaza right now. It is incredibly cool. May I have your attention, please, with the owner of a space gray alien hovercraft parked on the plaza, please return to your vehicle. Your lights are on. <laughs> ah, medium. That was a medium joke. <laughs> Car is amazing, though. So why is SpaceX unique? No one else can launch and reuse rockets, refly them, to deploy satellites to provide affordable internet, version 2.0, to everyone on Earth. Everyone. Um, you know, I was, watch I was reading in the Wall Street Journal a week ago, and they were talking about how uh, the United States government has a program, this is a Biden program, job program, union program, to have $44 billion to, uh, set aside to build internet so other people can have them. It's $16,000 a mile to string wire under the ground. And sooner or later, if a wire breaks, you've got to figure out where the break is and repair it. It's incredibly expensive. This article was in Nevada in the desert. They said that they wired a bunch of houses. $53,000 a house. $53,000 a house. A Wall Street Journal article. That's instead of taking a service that is available right this moment and ha having uh, you know, for, for Starlink, and paying $500 a house, and you have an antenna, you plug it in, point at the sky, and you have internet. So we've chosen to pay, spend $53,000 a house instead of $500 a house to have an antenna. It's crazy stuff going on. Um, so you should think about that when you're voting. On the other hand, when you think about the other people, you think about them too. <laughs> Everyone's crazy. <laughs> One more thing. Tesla and SpaceX have the best engineers on the planet. They're the number one and two cho career choices for today's top engineering graduates. In 2023, this year, these two companies, which employ 140,000 people, 130 at Tesla and, and 10,000 at SpaceX, 140,000 mission-driven individuals, they had 3.5 million applicants for 30,000 jobs. So most people can't get enough people to uh, fill their jobs. Three and a half million people applied for 30,000 jobs. Harder to get into, uh, in, in, get a job for SpaceX or Tesla than it is to get into Harvard. Although from what I've been reading lately, I don't know why I'd want to go to Harvard. <laughs> All barren cornerstone investments are unique. A few examples. Vail, the Eisenhower Tunnel on Interstate Highway 70, provides access to Vail from Denver 
in just two hours before the ag tunnel had been four and a half hours. 70% of Vail's epic lift ticket passes for its 41 ski mountains are purchased before it even snows. West Pharmaceutical is a dominant provider of packaging components for injectable medicines. Although a small part of a drug's cost, their FDA-approved packaging plays a critical role. That means you can't interact with the, with the medicine and the, and the stopper. ANZUS, excuse me. ANZUS spoke last year. That's a leading provider of data and compute to save time, money, and improve product design. Patek Philippe, I know you're supposed to pronounce it Patek Philippe. I can't do it, I just never get it right. So we'll just call it Patek. Patek Philippe, Barron's cornerstone investments remind me of an iconic Patek Philippe advertisement. It's a picture of a young father wearing a Patek with his son. You never actually own a Patek Philippe, you merely look after it for the next generation. We view Barron Capital through the same prism. I certainly would view it that way. Wealth creation through generational investments in unique assets and cornerstone businesses. Okay, we're getting near the end. Barron Capital. Asbury Park, that's where I come from, to Park Avenue. Hey, Asbury Park. <laughs> so, um, greetings from Asbury Park. Uh, this is not a clue of performer today. <laughs> but that's the beach I used to work at. I used to be a lifeguard around there. I worked on all these boardwalk jobs. And that's Asbury Park boardwalk. On the right-hand side is a picture of Jackie Kennedy, Aristotle Onassis, Jackie Kennedy Onassis, Aristotle Onassis, and her son, uh, John Kennedy Jr. Um, that's Park Avenue. That's actually Fifth Avenue. But it's right outside my office. So one, when I'm growing up, that's what I saw. Now I walk out, that's what I see. Amazing. Um, when we founded Barron Capital in 1982, we were undecided what to name it. Steve Wynn advised me, Ronnie, if you name your business after your family, that's making a promise. We named our business Barron Capital. The cornerstone of our firm bears not just my name, but that of my parents, my grandparents, children, and my grandchildren. So, so just as a second here, that Steve, Ronnie, my, kids, my friends from high school and grammar school, they call me Ronnie. My family calls me Ronnie. Steve Wynn, he calls me Ronnie. But on the other hand, if he made us a billion dollars, which he has, he can call me anything he wants. <laughs> <laughs> Still feels, feels really weird. Ronnie, I don't know. <laughs> my intent was to build a multi-generational firm that achieves exceptional performance for its clients, its employees, and my family. We've done that. In the early days, when it was just Susan, Linda, and me, I wore a lot of hats. This was an ad I wrote at the beginning of our business that ran in the Wall Street Journal. It was $8,000. <laughs> I got 50 phone calls in that week and an order for two large pepperoni pizzas. <laughs> the last was on a Friday. I ordered, my, it was from a friend. And I ordered him a really greasy hamburger, and I told him to deliver it at 5.30 at night and leave it on his desk. <laughs> he called me the following Monday. <laughs> I couldn't get a pizza up there. I often ask executives in whom we've invested whether their parents live to see their success. In my case, my mom lived to 93, my dad to 95. Both passed away in the past 10 years, so they saw it. My promise and Barron Capital's mission is to provide middle-class individuals like my parents, as well as wealthy families and institutions, an opportunity to invest in growth companies. So my parents, my brother sent me this. This was an invitation for their wedding in June 1942. I was born in 1943 in May. When I was young, I used to tell them all the time, I don't understand how, how come you're so young. It felt to me like I had to be illegitimate. And this, <laughs> or, you know, married, you know, before I was supposed to be born. <laughs> Legitimate, I mean, is their son. <laughs> but that's what I thought. And I would tease them about that all the time, and they always, they always seemed to warn me. But this sort of proved I was wrong. I just got that this past week. So all this time, I harassed them. 
and I was wrong. <laughs> Our goal has always been to enable everyone to participate in the possibility of America and to protect their savings from inflation. I've spent my career studying, researching, investing in, and not selling great businesses. Barron Capital has been shaped by what we've learned. Owning a business has made me a better analyst. Being an analyst has made me a better business owner. Just like the businesses we find attractive, we consistently invest in Barron Capital's growing staff of 45 analysts and portfolio managers and more than 207 employees, year after year, where the times are good or uncertain. So uh, this, uh, this picture is, is some of us in our office this past week. And can you give me a spotlight on the tall guy in the middle? That's Aton. So, so, so Aton, we hired him during COVID. He told me he played basketball on the Cornell team and made it to the NCAA Sweet 16. And so I'm asking him, Aton, how tall are you? And he said, I'm six foot eight. I said, you don't look at six, yeah, that tall, stand up. He says, I can't, I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> That's what he told me. <laughs> That's his working at home stuff. You know, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Just like the long-term ownership of portfolio businesses is unusual, so are long-tenured investment analysts and managers. I'm incredibly lucky to spend my days with exceptionally talented, hardworking, mission-driven individuals, including my two sons, David and Michael, with whom I've worked for more than 20 years. I've been discussing our business daily with David and Michael since they were children. One more thing. Two of my grandchildren, Leo, age 11, and Ari, age 9, are attending their first Barron Conference today. My other two grandchildren are napping. <laughs> Unlike most of you, they're napping at home, not in their seats. <laughs> I guarantee that before all of my grandchildren graduate from grammar school, they will understand Barron Capital's mission and what I mean by own it. Thank you for trusting us with your savings. <laughs>